Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? I hope the sun is shining in your kingdom today. Ready for some new stories from Ask a Lawyer? Let's go to the first one, about OP's son, who demands OP doesn't pay for her daughter's wedding because of how OP's girlfriend was treated by OP's brother-in-law's family. Listen to the story to find out the details, and of course to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I have two kids, daughter Bella and son Jack. Bella is 28 and Jack is 32. Bella is getting married to her fiancé Dave next year, and we're all beyond excited. Me and my husband are obviously attending and contributing to the wedding. It's a little bit of a long story, but I'll share some of the background. Dave's dad owns an IT company. Years ago, Jack's girlfriend at the time got a job at the company, but was fired within a year after some issues with the boss and Dave's sister. And Dave, I guess. Jack blamed Dave's family for kicking out his girlfriend and said she was quiet, so she was the easiest to pick on. Jack has never been supportive of Bella and Dave's relationship. They've been together for almost four years and said he won't be attending the wedding. The issue now is that he got mad at me and my husband for contributing to Bella's wedding and even attending. I said we're not going to force him to go if he doesn't want to, but he can't expect us to not be happy. Dave is a good guy from a good family, and more importantly, Bella loves him. Me and Jack had a bit of an argument where he said I don't care about him, and this is something he has to live with. I told him he needs to stop holding grudges and start acting his age. Jack got very upset at that. Info. What did Jack say was the reason his girlfriend was fired? Was she retaliated against for reporting harassment or other misconduct? You gloss over that. No, nothing like that. What I heard is that Dave's sister already worked there, and she had some issues with Jack's girlfriend. Then Dave was going to get a job at his dad's company, but they'd hired enough people for that department already. So his dad, hiring manager, let Jack's girlfriend go to hire Dave. She was given time to find another job and the option to leave on her own, which is what she did. Jack at the time insisted they did this to his girlfriend because of his sister's issues, and she was the easiest to pick on. Then when Bella and Dave started dating, he blamed Dave as well, since he knew what happened. At that point, it was a couple of years earlier. So, Dave's family is dishonest trash, who fired a woman for trying to claim her own work as hers, and for nepotism reasons. And OP is trying to say they are a good family, i.e., they have money. Dave got a job at his dad's company, which was cleared specifically for him, and Jack's then-girlfriend was kicked out as a consequence, and Dave's sister utilized personal issues as reason to help fasten the termination. Whether Dave knew this or not is immaterial, and it stands to reason that Bella is not marrying into a good family. The information OP shared only shows how unprofessional their company is, and all of them are. External Rip 6651 says, Everyone sucks here. You left out important context that you added in the comments that Jack's girlfriend was basically let go so that they could give Dave a job. While we know nepotism is rampant in the world, it's not always the easiest type of grudge that's easy to let go when it hits the ones you love. Jack should understand that you're still going to support your daughter, but you should understand that this is not about growing up. Someone hurt a person he loves, and the person responsible is now marrying into his family. That's hard, and it likely doesn't help that no one in his own family seems to even empathize with this. I, 22 female, have my golden birthday coming up in October this fall. My family has always gone all the way out for golden birthdays as far as I'm aware, so I'm planning to do the same for mine. I already started planning for my party in advance and put money down on renting a party bus, which is non-refundable, as well as purchased my outfit for the party, which will be taking place on the 21st of October because my actual golden birthday lands on a Monday. I drive a school bus for a living and I want to be able to drink alcohol and have a big party, so we're doing the celebration the Saturday before. The plan for the party is to go pub crawling, so it makes the most sense to do the party that Saturday anyways. Well, my sister, 29 female, wants me to cancel my party because she wants to go down to Mexico and party with her husband, 34 male, and she wants me to babysit her two toddlers instead. I told her no way in hell am I canceling my party because she refuses to hire babysitters outside of the family. She's throwing a fit because she might have to cancel her trip to Mexico or hire outside the family for a babysitter. I told her that her lack of planning doesn't constitute an emergency on my end and that she shouldn't just plan on being able to dump her kids off on me every time she wants to go do something because I'm not always available to babysit. 
It wouldn't be a huge deal if it wasn't my golden birthday, because you only get one of those. I remember my sister had hers at 17, and she had a massive party for it, and everybody else in the family who already had their golden birthdays, including children, all had massive parties. So I feel it's only fair that I get to do the same as an adult. In fact, my sister had the biggest party I have ever seen for her golden birthday, so I don't understand why I shouldn't be allowed to celebrate mine. My mom is on my side of this, because she wants to be able to drink too since we're surrounded by kids for 11 hours a day, 5 days a week, typically. We might be having a long weekend that week for a state-mandated break, but we don't want to be responsible for someone else's kids during that break. Both my mom and I drive a school bus for a living. I told my sister that, and she threw a fit and called me a terrible aunt. Am I the a-hole? This whole argument is ridiculous, I know. But I'm tired of my sister purposefully excluding me from family events by saying I don't deserve to participate because I'm autistic. It probably sounds stupid to a lot of people, but it hurts me to always be excluded and being the odd one out over something I can't control. I'm tired of being punished for having a disability, and I'm tired of having opportunities and family traditions taken away from me by my sister. I just want to have my cake and eat it too for once. I just want to have fun. Edit. For those unaware of what a golden birthday is, it's when you turn the age of whatever day of the month your birthday lands on. I'm turning 23 on 23 October, so that would be considered my golden birthday. Well, I think OP's sister is pretty damn entitled to even ask OP to cancel her plans that OP has been making way before she planned a trip. This isn't even an emergency. She's also being very selfish and inconsiderate. I also hope OP's mom sticks to not watching her kids to come out and celebrate with OP. Sister can either find someone else, take her children with her, or cancel, reschedule. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Skippy Skep says, Not the a-hole. Your sister isn't entitled to you working for her. She didn't even ask before scheduling a vacation where she expected you to just be available. And for duck's sake, she has until October to work something out to find alternatives. I don't get the hype about a golden birthday. But you are entitled to have as much of a party as you want for whatever reason you want and whenever you want. And you are arranging it yourself, not just expecting people to be available to make it possible the way your sister does. This is a non-issue between my husband and I, but sister-in-law has made it into one, so I'd like to see what others think. Husband and I, both 29, have two kids, five female, three female. If I vacuum when they're watching TV, I let them turn the volume up a little. This only happens when it's out for long periods of time, cleaning day, as they abandon the TV eventually. Sister-in-law, 32 female, came by with her kids, 5 male, 4 female, 3 male, for a surprise visit on cleaning day. Our 5-year-old had a birthday party the previous weekend, so the house was a wreck, and my husband was at work, so it was just me and the kids upstairs. I keep the house locked up, so she let herself in with a spare key we gave out for emergencies. We were all in the playroom when they busted in. It absolutely scared the crap out of me. I turned the vacuum off, five-year-old turned the TV down, and I apologized for not seeing her calls, texts. Because obviously in cleaning, I'd missed something, and she totally didn't just let herself into my locked house. But sister-in-law informed me she hadn't called or texted. They were in the neighborhood to drop off a present since they missed the party due to vacation. She saw my car here, but nobody answered the door, so she just let everyone in. Before I could ask her why she thought she could just let herself into my locked house without notifying me, we aren't close with them like that. She went off on me for letting the girls run rampant with the TV while I'm not paying attention to them. That it was dangerous for so much noise to be distracting me at once, and she could have been some random person letting themselves inside to do God only knows, cringy shudder included. It wasn't the most mature response, but I was so befuddled that I just started laughing hysterically. One moment I'm mindlessly vacuuming up popcorn, and the next I'm being lectured on the care of my kids by an uninvited house guest. I asked if this random person would also use their emergency-only spare key to get inside, which caused her to turn red and develop a stutter. She malfunctioned further when I asked if she had remembered to lock the door again behind her. She told me that my daughter can forget about her present, and she corralled her kids before hastily leaving. I had to lock the door again after her too, of course. I texted my husband to let him know what happened, and he told me he would deal with it, so I left it. When he came home later that evening, he had their spare key. Apparently he stopped by after work to chat, and she started in on him too. His brother wasn't home at the time, so instead of engaging, 
He just asked for the key back, which she threw at him, and he left. Since then, we've gotten calls from family asking why I laughed in the face of sister-in-law's genuine concern, and if we're being safe with our kids. Most seem to understand when I explain the whole situation, but some still took sister-in-law's side, or said I should have handled it differently. Am I the a-hole? OP's sister-in-law had no right to walk into OP's home. She hadn't called or texted OP ahead of time. She literally let herself into OP's home uninvited, and then tried to tell OP she wasn't doing a good job parenting. What the duck gives her the entitlement? She clearly has no boundaries, and OP and her husband had every right to handle it the way they did. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Foggy Radish says, Not the a-hole, but your sister-in-law is. Change locks, re-key locks, because she might have made copies. Find someone else to be your emergency key holder, as sister-in-law cannot be trusted anymore. And good on your husband for having your back on this. I'd be wondering how many other times she's used that emergency key that you never found out about. Dazzling Revenue says, Not the a-hole. Oh boy. I think you handled this perfectly, including the laugh. Especially because of the laugh. You don't owe her any explanation. What kind of person punishes a child in this situation and holds back her gift? Wow. Your husband gets a round of applause also. Your sister-in-law needs to get a life, get off her high horse, makes her butt look big, and definitely needs to grow up. Kronkla Swarta says, Not the a-hole. She just walked into your home with no notification using the emergency-only key. When called out on it, she childishly said your kid won't get a present. What if the kids were visiting friends and you were having alone time with your husband? Awkward. I've been married to Chris for 10 years. Before me, he was married to Lacey for 8, but they were together since high school. They have four kids. Chris and I have two. Lacey hated me. It was beyond our personalities. I think she was bitter over being divorced and seeing the man she was with since 16 move on. But that's her problem, not mine. We've gotten into it a few times. I'm not apologizing to her because I'm happy and she's not. Chris and Lacey's youngest son, Jacob, was diagnosed with stage 3 lymphoma and needed a bone marrow transplant. Unfortunately, no one in his family was a match. I also got tested and was a match. Lacey actually asked me if I was going to donate like I'm some kind of witch. Of course I donated, and Jacob is in remission as of this year and is your average 13-year-old kid. Lacey has started to come around to me because she knows what I did for Jacob. That's her favorite son. It's bizarre to have her ask me how I'm doing or send me random flowers. The truth is that I don't want to be friends with her. The damage has been done between us, and my life is peaceful without her. I'd do what I did a million more times if I had to. No need to shower me with accolades. Just leave me alone. That's exactly what I told her. She told me that what I said was the most hurtful thing anyone has ever said or done to her. My husband said I should apologize, but I refuse to apologize for setting up boundaries with someone I can't stand. Ray says, hey, says, not the a-hole. Her brain is scrambling for a way to get things back to normal, where she can be the victim and you are the villain again. Hence, her dramatic reaction to your reasonable, we don't have to be friends line in the sand. And the part that she's likely finding difficult to reconcile is that you did the selfless thing, and you're still being selfless about it by not lording your good deed over her. That's a her problem. Enjoy your boundaries and your life. M Bop 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 Do Wop says, Not the a-hole. I'm so glad you were a match for Jacob. Best of luck to him as he recovers. Lacey is feeling gratitude and guilt and all manner of feelings rolled into a ball. It's great that she's appreciative of what you did, but it's not okay for her to insist that you be bestest buddy buddies now. And it's certainly not okay for her to claim that you not wanting to be friends is hurtful to her when she's rejected you from the outset. You don't need to be besties with your ex-husband's ex. That's a perfectly acceptable boundary. She needs to accept it, and so does your husband. Wilder of Affirmism says, Not the a-hole. There's nothing to apologize for. She was awful to you. You donating bone marrow is about the kid, not her. She's the collateral beneficiary, but it doesn't mean you have to forget her past behavior. I don't even understand why your husband would want you to apologize. She needs to apologize for years of bad behavior. My, 31 male, wife, 30 female, and I have one child, four male, and my wife is six months pregnant with our daughter, who's due in March. My wife and I have been friends since we were about five, so I've known her and her parents for more than 25 years now. 
Her parents were always very approving of us dating, which we started doing in high school. Her parents split up a year after my wife finished high school, and her dad moved out of the picture. So it was just her mom, now 65 female primarily. Her mother was the nicest person in the world until our first child was born four years ago. Her issue with it was that our son was born out of wedlock. She was very vocal about her disapproval of this, but my wife seemed to be able to get her to come around. However, she since has been cold, passive aggressive, and in some cases, downright mean to us, and much worse, our son. I wouldn't even say the family is religious, but it seems to just be a custom that is abided by in that family. My brother and sister-in-law both have partners, but are waiting until marriage to have kids, much to my mother-in-law's delight. The last four years, she's blown off numerous events, only hanging out with us if her other kids are busy. She didn't even come to our wedding, which of course caused a massive rift in the family. All of this time, I've been nothing but lenient with her. I've never lost my temper or gotten mad at her, never been vocal or had any resistance to her whatsoever. I've given her hundreds of chances to redeem herself. Last New Year's Eve, we convinced her to babysit our son. We made these concrete arrangements in September and checked in on it multiple times between September and December. As my wife and I were preparing to go out, getting dressed up, etc., she canceled on us, saying she had other plans. My wife and I weren't able to hire a babysitter and so had to stay back with our son, which obviously wasn't the worst thing in the world. In June 2022, we told her we were expecting our second child, and I think you can imagine her reaction. Oh, this time you actually waited until you were married, etc. She gave us hell, mostly through snarky remarks, but while a bit tipsy a couple of days later, she went so far as to call us S addicts, because none of her other kids had had kids yet. For all of this year, I've acted like nothing happened, blowing the New Year's Eve and June debacles off. But this Christmas, I've decided to take my revenge, and I told her she won't be invited to our family Christmas. Which is saying something, because even my wife's dad, who we rarely make contact with, is coming. Christmas is a big deal in our family. I should also say that we have never been invited to anything hosted by her, although all of her other kids and their partners are, since our son was born. And in the rare case that she does invite our family, it's always just my wife, specifically excluding me often explicitly. Now, with me not inviting her, my mother-in-law is furious, my wife is furious, most of the family is furious, and now I need to know, am I the a-hole? Gimme the doggo says, so I'm gonna say everyone sucks here, because your mother-in-law is absolutely the a-hole, and I was with you until you said your wife was furious, implying you went over her head in not inviting her mother, so I'm afraid you're also the a-hole. You guys have been together a long time, and I would have hoped you had remembered that a couple, especially parents, need to be a team. You did something without agreeing with your teammate, and that's never going to go down well. Even more so, it's her side of the family that you made the decision about. Iron Butterfly says, Not the a-hole. This is not revenge. This is her reaping what she sowed all these years. However, if your wife wants her there, I think you should allow her mother to make a fool out of herself one more time. Consider her antics entertainment for the night. I'd personally make that clear to her. It's not a fun family gathering without a little drama. Jerkface1983 says, Not the a-hole, but you have a huge wife problem. I would never let anyone disrespect me or my family, kids, spouse. Don't care who it is.